Good morning to uh, our schools division superintendent, Dr. Uh, Balderos, at saka kay Ma'am Bernadette Luna. Napakaganda po ng kanilang uh, uh, sinabi. And I'm excited po. Alam nyo, kagabi kinulit na ako ng team ni Ma'am uh, ng Gemma at para i-test and everything. Tapos tinignan ko yung website yung mga activities ng uh, DepEd Dasmarinas, I was so impressed. Grabing leadership ng Dasmarinas DepEd talaga. Saka ang ganda ng team nila. So thanks Jeff and all the team um, composition of DepEd Dasmarinas. Maraming salamat po. Um, na, na, napakasarap pakinggan yung introduction ni, <laughs> ni Ma'am Gemma sa akin. But actually, Nagsimula po ako dito sa Manila, probinsyano po ako eh. Nagsimula po ako dito sa Manila ng 1987, pumunta po ako dito. Ang trabaho ko po, guard, guardia pro, ang uh, blue guard, mm -hmm. doon sa Ayala, Labang Village, uh, dyan sa may Muntilupa. Oo, oh, yan ang trabaho ko po. Uh, nasa gate po ako, nagsasaludo po ako ng uh, 25,000 cars every day po, doon sa gate. Um, dumating po kami dito from... Uh, Yeah, just a little bit of my story. Uh, katira po kami dyan sa harap, sa tinatawag na San Jose, sa squatters area. Ang mga anak ko po, grade 1, at saka yung isa 6 years old. Um, ilang taon din kami po dyan, uh, sa lugar na yan. At uh, ang mga anak ko na pumapasok sa public school doon sa Almanza Elementary School. Doon po sila pumapasok. Uh, so, alam ko po kung anong uh, kahirapan ng buhay. Uh, lagi kong sinasabi sa mga... Uh, kaibigan na uh, alam nyo yung poverty hindi yan excuse eh, para magkaroon ng magandang education yung mga anak natin but um, right now um, I'm excited actually to share with you some of these things na uh, natutunan ko uh, dahil may dalawa nga kaming anak ni Mrs. Kamats yung wife ko by the way yung wife ko ngayon siya yung Uh, manager ng homeschool. Alam mo yung homeschool department ng school namin ng Philippines Christian School of Tomorrow mahigit 20 years na po yan in existence. We are recognized by the DepEd. We have permit. And um, karamihan po na isishare ko sa inyo ng mga lessons today uh, nang gagaling po dyan o na doon sa homeschool. Kasi homeschooling po is sa bahay talaga, hindi ba? Um, mayroon kaming system Uh, for homeschool and we use the School of Tomorrow curriculum, the Accelerated Christian Education. Um, also, uh, I consulted uh, a few days ago yung uh, principal namin sa school, si Ma'am Harriet. So, most of the things I'm sharing to you um, nagagaling po dito sa mga actual experiences. Okay? Actual experiences. Ang goal ko po sa talk na to is just to inspire you and to become a fighter. Kasi ang pandemic ngayon, hindi tayo dapat nagsusurrender eh. No? Yun ang una ang nasasabihin ko sa inyo. Now, uh, ilabas ko lang po yung aking uh, presentation po dito. Okay. I hope you can see that. So the role of parents in their child's education in the new normal. Okay? The new normal. So I'm going to talk about the 10 critical roles and functions of parents. Ano bang papel ninyo sa bagong normal ngayon para sa education ng mga anak natin? Okay? Sampo yan, isishare ko sa inyo. Also, number two, the second part, ito parang bonus ko na lang sa inyo, bonus lesson na lang ito. Okay? The five indispensable values for children we need to teach our children. Napakanganda po nitong mga principles kasi um, this is from my heart and um, from my own personal experience. Uh, iniisip ko nang nag-uusap kami ni Ma'am Gemma ano bang, ano bang sombrero, ano bang hat na i-wear ko dito sa talk na to kasi <laughs> una una, businessman po ako okay, I own two companies pangalawa um, pastor din po ako sa church namin na associate pastor ako, nagtuturo ako pangatlo, security professional po ako, eh. investigator po ako ng mga crime and corruption crime buster, crime buster po din ako Uh, I get uh, um, engaged po sa dito, hindi lang po sa Pilipinas, kung sa ibang bansa po para mag-investiga ng mga fraud, corruption sa private companies. American companies, Japanese companies po, yun talaga po ang karir ko. No? Um, so, sabi ko, hindi na lang, i-combine ko na lang <laughs> lahat na hat ko at saka 
sana ma- matutunan niyo tong uh, ituturo ko sa inyo ngayon ni share ko ng mga mga lessons. Okay, are you ready to go? Thank you all. Uh, I, I heard 3,000 or three, more than 3,000 na nakikinig dito na, na nanonood. <laughs> Parang na overwhelm sa bilis sobra pa lang dami ng ng mga followers nitong uh, Dep Edas Marinia. So, are you ready to go? If you have pen, you can, you know, if you have camera or you have a pen, you can take notes and by the way, Mom Gemma and Jeff, I'm I'm authorizing uh to share uh this material to our parents, okay? They can they can have this material. I'll I'll email this to you. Okay, let's go. So, let's look at, let's look at the pandemic thing na natin. Parang wala pang end inside dito eh. As of yesterday, last night, I, I look it up, 116 people have been infected and the number is going up. So, parang wala pa eh. There's no end in sight. Pangit yung magkaroon tayo ng pulse na next year, okay na, no? Wag, let's be realistic. So, social distancing is here to stay. Abang nandyan yan. By the way, please, I appeal to you. Follow the rules on social distancing. Napakahirap po pag kayo ay, o yung kamag-anak ninyo, o yung mga anak ninyo, pamilya ninyo ay na-infect. Napakahirap po. Okay. New normal is the order of the day. <laughs> New normal. That's the normal of today where we have the pandemic. Lalo na po sa education, yung topic po natin. So, Napakaganda po ng ginawa ng DepEd, no? yung uh, LCP na tinatawag nila, Learning Continuity Plan. Uh, grabe, na, napakasipag po ng uh, mga teachers ng DepEd. Um, alam ko yan kasi tatlo sa kapatid ko, uh, teachers eh, no? doon sa Negros. Ang brother-in-law ko, principal. So, alam ko kung gaano kasipag yung mga teachers. But, ito, nag-device sila ng program para lang mapatuloy po natin yung uh, pag-aaral ng mga bata, okay? So, there are online classes na discuss na napakaganda rin po ng uh, in, uh, uh, infographics kanina na pinresent ni Jeff. Uh, by the way, hindi, hindi ko na po ulitin yun, ano? Kasi iba po yung, yung talk ko ngayon is more on the soft skills. But uh, yung pong infographics na napakaganda, tinuturuan po kayo ng, um, ng, ng DepEd kung talagang anong mga procedures. So, also printed modules. Uh, nakita ko pa, mayroon pang TV and radio broadcast. So, yun po mga paraan, mga mode ng, ng learning ngayon because of the uh, requirement for social distancing, uh, kailangan po nang face-to-face. Okay. So, as of July uh, 15, 20.7 million students already have, in, uh, have enrolled uh, in the public and private schools. And that's only 74% of the uh, 2019 figures. But it's still good. Uh, to me, it's... Can you imagine yung 20 million na yan, 21 million na mga estudyante ngayon, come August 24, bubulusok yan. And they are going to be either an online or in the printed module um, learning system. Here's my observation. Uh, Pinag-aralan ko po, binasa ko lahat, pinanood ko sa YouTube ang mga materials, infographics. Uh, I familiarize myself with this, you know, uh, forms to be used in this new normal uh, by the DepEd. Itong conclusion ko po, the execution of the DepEd's distance learning modules require parents to play a vital or a major role. Napakahalaga po yung role, yung papel ng parent dito sa bagong setup. So, the program puts serious responsibilities on the shoulders of the parents for the execution. Ano po? At kung wala yung commitment, pag hindi po kayo committed, listen parents, ilagay nyo na to sa isipan nyo, the next few months or years, kailangan talaga yung commitment ninyo dito. Because the program will fail. In my opinion, the program will fail if the parents will not be intentional. Alam mo yung intentional? Hindi sila, hindi sila talaga seryoso sa paggawa ng dapat gawin para ma-execute yung uh, LCP. Okay? Yung um, online at saka yung uh, printed 
uh, mode of learning. So, let's look at challenges, okay? Are you a parent today? Ito yung mga challenges nyo, okay? I hope you can relate. Number one, limited time. Karamihan ng mga parents nagtatrabaho, okay? Mabuti kung isa lang yung tatrabaho, sometimes both parents, the mother and the father, they work. So, time. Time constraint. Um, maybe, sabi nga ng anak ko, nag-consult ako sa anak ko <laughs> sa Dubai, which is, may apo na kami, na, na, nag-homeschool, seven years old ang siya si Asray. Uh, tinawagan ko yung anak ko. Kasi for three years, uh, yeah, almost three years, nag-homeschool siya talaga ng anak niya. Malayo, no? Just send the materials there, nag-homeschool siya. So, marami siyang tips po na ito rin in-incorporate ko po sa lesson natin. Yeah. But time is, is very, but it's very important here. Hindi ko alam, baka pwede sa gabi, di ba? Pwede sa gabi. You have to agree on a schedule, but that's a challenge. Pangalawa, yung quick assimilation of new materials. Ang ganda na sinabi ni um, Dr. Balderos kasi kailangan mag-learn ulit yung parents eh. Tayo mga parents, kailangan natin talagang pag-aralan, assimilate natin, intindihin natin yung mga bagong materials ngayon ng DepEd. Okay? Para magamit natin, maturuan natin, mag-guide natin yung mga anak natin properly. Number three is the balancing of household responsibilities with academic work. Oh, so it's a challenge also. No? Paano ngayon balansin yung mga trabaho sa bahay, problema sa bahay, saka yung pag-aaral ng, ng anak mo o mga anak mo. Mabuti kung isa lang yung anak mo. Paano kung may tatlo kang anak nag-aaral? So, it's a challenge. Kasi dati, you just send them to school and then you go on with your life. You go on with your activities sa bahay nyo, whatever. But right now, they're right there. no? So, kailangan, challenge talaga yan. And we will address all of these things later on. And then, of course, the new responsibilities to help their children's academic progress. Maraming, maraming bago sa mga parents ngayon. Maraming bago. And then, pag pinafollow niyo po yung mga procedures doon sa infographics, marami pong uh, responsibilities ang parents dito sa new normal uh, setup ng um, DepEd. Okay. Ang mga sasabihin ko ngayon, ah, uh, it's a benchmark for our home. As I said, homeschooling namin. Uh, it's been existed for over 20 years. At uh, many of this, we've faced problems, challenges, and more or less, we know what works in a homeschool setting. Okay? Para alam na namin kung anong dapat papel ng mga parents. Kasi similar yung homeschool dito online. Okay? Actually, yung homeschool namin, we 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 use uh, what we call packets, right? Paste, um, parang worksheet siya, similar to the materials right now na mayroon yung DepEd. So, not the same, but similar. So, nag-benchmark ako dito, ano, ano bang epektibong ginagawa ng mga homeschool? We have over 3,000 students. We have over 3,000 homeschoolers in the Philippines. So, dami nun, eh, di ba? So, it's been a successful program. But here, I will share with you what makes distance learning successful. So, the 10 roles and functions require the parents in the new normal distance learning. Sampo po ito, okay? Are you ready to go? Okay? 10. I will show you the 10, and then one by one, we will explain. We will talk about it. Okay, are you ready to go? Let's just have fun, okay? Sabi nga ni, <laughs> ni, ni Ma'am Badet kanina, let's have fun. Kasi, listen, pag toxic yung environment, mga bata hindi naman talaga makalearn eh. Yeah, learning has to be fun. You have to infuse, you know, enjoyment and fun. So that's what we're going to do, okay? Let's just have fun with this material. But I want you to get every point here. So here are the 10 roles and functions. Ito yung papel ninyo as parents. Number one, learner. Number two, teacher. Number three, you are a supervisor. Number four, you are an auditor. Number five, you are an enforcer. We'll, we'll look at that. You are a leader. Number six. Number seven, you are an encourager. Number eight, you're a manager. Although wala kang sao dito, okay? Number nine, 
you are a listener. And then number 10, you are a collaborator. Mga nanay, tatay, makinig kayo mabuti ha. Ito kayo, coming up ito sa inyo. When August 24 starts, the school starts, ito ho kayo. Ito yung functions ninyo. Okay, tingnan natin isa-isa. Okay, tingnan natin isa-isa. Number one. Learner, kagaya ng sinabi kanina na atin na uh, superintendent. Dati hindi nyo naman inaaral yung materials ng mga anak nyo eh, sa school. Ngayon, you must have a working knowledge of the materials and the system. It's all new. Bago lahat yun. Alamin nyo dapat yung content, yung procedure, yung process. And you must be intentional. Hindi pwede hong pabayaan na lang natin yan. Kukunin natin yung material, bibigyan natin sa mga anak natin. No, it's, it's not gonna work like that. I look at the procedures. It does not, it, it, it's, it's not gonna work. Hindi siya uubra ho eh. Nang pabayaan, nang, nang pagpabayaan lang natin, na i-hand over lang natin sa mga bata. Intindihan nyo? Importante yun. So, I have to go back to being a learner. Ito may mga limitation din tayo kasi sa mga, ang mga parents na ibang mga anak, uh, mga bata ay, um, minsan limited lang rin yung uh, pinag-aralan, minsan, um, may mga limitations na ganyan but learning the materials, the new materials from the DepEd, from your schools is very, very critical because number two ito yung sinabi na rin to ng ating uh, mahal superintendent si uh, Dr. Balderos you are now the teacher okay you are now the teacher, you are a substitute and you can teach what you don't know. Hindi mo pwedeng, kaya muna mo na learner, hindi mo pwedeng naman ituro na hindi mo alam. Okay? So, kayo na ho, yung teacher ngayon. Make your mind. Balik na ho yung responsibility na yan. Okay. So, I can't hear anybody right now. I'm just checking my phone whether I'm, I'm still okay. Are we still okay? Can you, can somebody just give me a say hi? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. You're hearing me? Are yes, you hearing sir. me? Okay. Yes, sir. Loud okay. and clear. Bro. Loud and clear. Okay. How are we, how are you doing so far? <laughs> so far. <laughs> okay. Teacher. Ito, number three, supervisor. And supervisor to na walang sahod, ha? Okay. Bakit? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng role of parent o papel niya sa supervisor? Because pag of supervisor ka, you oversee, no? You guide. You correct the work of your kids. Uh, also online. Kahit na online learning yung mga anak ninyo, kailangan pa rin niya supervision yan eh. So, isa sa mga sombrero yan, isa sa mga hat na winawin ninyo in the new normal is being a supervisor. You have to take time. Lalagyan nyo talaga ng oras yan eh. Titingnan nyo talaga yung ginagawa ng mga anak ninyo. Hindi po hindi yung pabaya, okay? So, you are supervisor. Number four. Ito, auditor. Na ako, auditor din ako. I, I do audits even outside the country dun sa trabaho ko. Ano bang ginagawa ng auditor? <laughs> Nagbabalidate ka ng trabaho. No? Nagbabalidate ka kung pinafollow yung procedure. Okay? Like here. Pag start nitong bagong mga modules na to, isa sa mga responsibility nyo, uh, nanay at tatay, is to Look at the work, the progress of your kids' academic performance, academic work, and to validate kung sila ba ay sumusunod doon sa procedures, sila ba ay tama ba yung ginagawa nila? Tanungin nyo sila. You know? one, of the, one of the tools here is asking questions. 
to determine the understanding of the children of the materials. Kailangan tanungin mo. So, kailangan mo siya aralin para alam mo kung anong itatanong mo sa mga anak mo nag-aaral. And also, para ma-determine mo rin o ma-measure mo rin kung ano na sila, saan na sila, yung progress nila. You can track their progress. Alam mo dun sa um, programa ng DepEd, may, may, the fourth part is the assessment. No? Assessment. So, maganda pagka in-assess nyo muna. Ito ha, bigyan ko kayo ng tip. I-audit nyo yung mga anak ninyo para maintindihan ninyo for sure kung anong klaseng assimilation or understanding ba mayroon ang mga anak ninyo dun sa material na pinrovide sa kanila para aralin nila. Again, it's not just memorization. This is inculcation, absorption, understanding. Okay? Ganun po yun. Okay? Uh, here's another, here's another uh, activity of the parent as an auditor. Check the online activities of your kids, your minor kids. Okay? Now, responsibility nyo yan. Kasi minsan, ang mga bata maraming influences yan. Hindi mo alam kung ano nang ina-access nila ng mga websites. Baka hindi na maganda. So, Try to audit. Kung may phone yung mga anak nyo, mayroon silang laptop, mayroon silang gadgets. From time to time, it's within your right. It's within your right as authority, as the parent, to check your kids from time to time just to make sure that they don't go astray. Okay? So you audit. Audit their phones. Okay? Especially if they're minor kids. And, and uh, you know, Napakadami ng mga masasamang uh, websites ngayon na pwede i-access ng mga anak natin at masisira sila pag hindi natin na-control. Okay. If you have questions, comments, just you know, send me later. I think they'll send, send me later, okay? Number five, ito, <laughs> itong isang papel ninyo mga nanay at tatay, enforcer po kayo. Hindi kayo traffic enforcer. <laughs> Kagaya na sa labas dyan, no? o mga pulis. But in a way, you are an enforcer. Paano ba itong nangyayari? You demand compliance or obedience doon sa procedure, sa schedules. And ito talaga ma malaga. The elimination of distractions. Pag sinabi mo sa mga anak mo, nag-agree kayo ng mga anak nyo, may certain time kayo, na mag-aral sila, time for study nila yan, time to work uh, on, on their academic uh, uh, materials. Dapat walang phone dyan. Kasi hindi ma pwedeng nag-aaral yung mga bata maya-maya, nito sila o pinagawa nila, hindi ba? Hindi naman pwedeng ganun. So, pag nag-agree kayo ng ganyan on any rules, dapat i-enforce nyo yan. Dapat ilayo yung Ngayari yung mga bata, gumagawa sila sa modular, okay? Modular distance learning, ibig sabihin, mayroon silang actual na sinusulat dyan. They don't need their phone. So, eliminate distractions. Uh, TV, for example, TV. Dapat enforce nyo yung limitation. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin na hindi sila manonood. Manonood din sila pero control dyan. Hindi mo pwedeng whole day manonood sila ng TV because they have some tasks, academic tasks to finish. So, uh, parents, ano nyo yan? Responsibility nyo yan eh. If you want to have good, good kids, excellent kids, you have to step in and, and, and enforce certain procedures, certain rules sa bahay ninyo. Hindi pwedeng free for all. Hindi pwedeng mga bata, gawin lang nila lahat gusto nila. Hindi po pwede yun. They will become losers and it's gonna be you who will be responsible. Here's a good concept and I got this from my wife. I interviewed my wife. 
There is no learning without control. Okay? You cannot teach what you don't control. Napakalaga nun eh. Kasi kung mga bata, ginagawa lang nila kung anong gusto nila, wala silang control, ayaw nilang pasakop, ayaw nilang magpakontrol sa'yo as parents, as their authority, they will never learn. Because learning requires a controlled environment. And you have to enforce that controlled environment. Because you cannot learn without concentration, prolonged thinking. Kailangan na kailangan po yun ng mga bata. Sana! Napakalaga po nito. Huwag niyo tong talikuran yung enforcement. Use your authority. So dun sa second part ng lesson mo yan, ay makikita natin yung uh, concept na related to that. So, just to recap, before we go to number six, in the new normal, mga nanay, mga tatay, lola, kung ikaw man yung guardian, magiging learner ka na? Magbabasa ka? Aralin mo yung materials? Magtuturo ka? Okay? Intentionally, tuturo ka. Magsusupervise ka. Tingnan mo talaga yan. Kasi, dun sa, yan, alam mo, yung karir ko, 30 years ako na sa corporate world, sabi nila, lagi matig mo yun. Get supervised, gets done. Pag isang task, isang bagay, sino supervise mo yan, pinupuntahan mo, pinitingnan mo, check mo, magagawa yan. Minsan pag sinabi mo sa iyo, no, marami akong employees, so, yun, pag sinabi mo lang na, oh, gawin mo to, ganito, ganyan, pag hindi mo yan pinalua, pag hindi mo sinupervise yung trabaho, minsan it turn out, mali yung ginawa, o hindi nagawa. Ganon din po, sa ating, uh, sa bahay, uh, pag nag-start na po yung mga anak natin ng, pag-aaral nila. Kailangan po talaga may supervision. Number four, auditor. Check, recheck, validate, verify. Okay? Yan ang trabaho po. Okay? Auditor. Lalaki po na sahod ng mga auditor sa labas, pero kayo, wala kayo sahod. Libre lang. Okay? <laughs> Enforcer. You exercise control. You make sure that you demand obedience and compliance in the home. That's the only way you can succeed in this new normal. Okay. Let's go to number six. You have to be a leader. I love leadership. I teach leadership both here in the Philippines and in other countries. Kasi leadership is not about position or title or power. Leadership is influence. Sabi nga ng mentor ko si John Maxwell when I studied under him. It's influence. It's the impact you create to people around you. Ano mo kwento ko lang, the past three Saturdays, uh, naglaran ako ng leadership training dito sa mga managers ko at saka sa mga officers ng aming company, mga, mga supervisors. Tinanong ko sa kanila on day one, sabi ko, tell me who influenced you the most sa buhay ninyo. Tell me who made the most impact sa buhay ninyo na naging na kayo. Ano ba sagot nila? 90%? Mother, father. So napakalaga na hanggang andyan pa yung mga anak natin, sa piling natin, napakalaga gagawin natin sa kanya. And you have to be a leader. Ano ibig sabihin nyo? You provide positive influence sa mga bata. Inspiration. You inspire them. You strike a balance between love and discipline. Um, itong napakahalaga nitong concept. Now stay with me for a while. Turuan ko kayo. Love, discipline. Pag sobra ka ng love at hindi ka nagdi-discipline, you will fail. Kasi hindi ka rin ng mga bata. O kahit sa trabaho, kahit sa secular life, kahit sa sports, kahit in any area of life. 
Pag hindi ka nag-implement ng some kind of a discipline, free for all yan. Ngayon, kung sobra naman yung discipline mo, at wala kang love, magre-rebel din naman yung mga tao o yung mga anak mo. So, leadership strikes a balance. So, the function of leadership is to inspire. Inspire your children. Hindi puro tayo naging, naging, naging. Hindi nakikinig yung mga bata eh. No. Create. How to inspire your kids. Tell them about stories. Get some information of inspirational stories. Ito pa, motivation. You, have to, you are the one responsible to motivate your kids. Find a way to motivate them. Reward them for a job well done. Those are all functions of leadership. But most of all, folks, as a leader in your home, you have to teach them to dream. Ito, iniingatan ko itong point na ito kasi I become emotionally involved in these principles. Yun sa buhay ko. Um, alam niyo yung anak kong bunso, si Irene. Nung high school siya. Sabi niya, gusto niya maging doktor. Eh, security guard lang po ako. Wala akong sana natin kamay na just kunin yung paaral sa kanya. Pero hindi ko po sinabi sa anak ko, kaya rin na, ambisyosa mo naman. Alam mo na ganito lang tayo, magdidoktor ka, saan tayo kukuha? Folks, I told my kid, okay, dream. God will provide. Keep on dreaming. You become a doctor someday. You become a doctor someday. And today she is a Obigaine, she is a doctor. Teach your kids to think beyond what they're doing. Ito nga yun, busy sila, marami silang academic work, ah, dami-dami nila schedule. Teach them that can become this. After you fulfill your responsibility, gawin mo lang yan, anak, gawin mo lang yan, tapusin mo yan kasi Pwede kang maging ganito. Insert in their minds what they can become. Itirbaho mo yan, parent ka eh. Hindi dapat kinukuha ng mga iba yung isa yung vision casting tawag yan eh. Okay? Leadership. Inspire your kids. Ask them what they want to become someday. And breathe belief. Hingahan mo ng belief yung mga dreams ng mga anak mo. Tell them that they can become that, what they want to be. Okay? That's your function as a leader in the home. Number seven, let's go there. Also, in the new normal, you have to be an encourager. Encourager. You become positive force when your children tend to give up. Alam mo, mapapagod at mapapagod yung mga bata. Bago yung material, bago yung setup, bago yung system. Yung iba dyan, mga bata, magbibigay yan eh. Bibitaw yan. Madidiscourage yan. It's your job to encourage them. It's your job to lift their spirit. It's your job to Stay side by side with them and say, Anak, you can do this. I will help you. 
Be that kind of parent. Someone who is an encourager. Who will warm the spirits of your children. So that they say, Kaya ko to. Kaya ko to. Number eight. Itong pang walong papel mo. Manager, again, wala sahod. <laughs> you didn't know you're a manager, ha? <laughs> Anong minamanage mo? Hello? You plan. You organize time and routine and chores and work. Sa bahay natin, kailangan na natin mag-organize. Dati, sinisend lang natin yung mga anak sa school again. And we do our own thing. Ngayon, kailangan mo siyang i-organize. Yung time for academic work. Okay, time for chores. There has to be a delegated task. Ano bang pwede mong i-delegate dyan? You're gonna be a manager or an organizer. Here's a good word, routine. Folks, routine. Routine, write it down if you have paper. You can never accomplish anything significant in your life without a routine. Something that you do consistently on a daily basis, on a regular basis. There's no greatness without routine. I learned that a long time ago. I share with you my routine. Every day, I wake up at 4 o'clock, I read. Because matanda na ako eh. Kaya maaga nagigising. I read, I meditate on the Word of God. Then, I do my thing, my work. Every afternoon, my wife and I, we, we jog and we walk. Four kilometers to five kilometers. That's every day, no fail, here in our village, just to keep fit. Routine. Every day, repeatedly. You say, that's boring naman sa mga bata. Okay, from time to time, of course, you insert some activities. Be creative, but they have to follow a routine. What time they start working, what they need to accomplish, the time of eating, and all that. You have to manage that. Okay? A disorganized home is a bad environment for academic learning. Napatunayan ko yan sa buhay ko. Kami magkakapatid, walo kami, no? Tatay namin, construction worker, magkatrabaho sa construction. Nanay namin, mananay. Magulo'y bahay namin, eh. No? Minsan lasing pa. Lagi yung ano, tatay. Disorganize yung home namin. So, saan ka, paano ka mag-aral? So, kumbaga, ano, <laughs> topsy-turvy yung Elementary tsaka yung high school education ko. Medyo nag-improve lang ako na nag-aral ako sa uh, ibang lugar. Umalis ako sa bahay. Na-discover ko yung sarili ko. But anyway, you have to manage. Okay? Begin today. Simulan mo na ngayon. Bigyan nyo na schedule yung mga bata. Hindi naman pwede kayo lahat gagawa ng trabaho. Teach your kids to do chores at home. Don't allow your kids to just spend the whole day in their phone. Meron na yung mental illness na tinatawag nila digital dementia. Eh. No? No? Nababaliw yung mga tao sa kaka all day. All hours dito sa phone, sa gadget. Don't let that happen to your children. Control them. Manage them. Okay? Let's go to number nine. Ito, malaga rin. Soft skill ito. In the new normal, you have to become a listener. Now, of course, as a parent, it's given you, you have to be a listener. Always. But much more so in the new normal, in, you know, in the online and, and this um, learning modules. Kailangan mo talagang makinig. Active listening. You intentionally listen to both what is said and what is not being said. Alam mo yung mga bata, may sasabihin sa sayo, pero kailangan alamin mo yung ano talagang sinasabi niya na hindi niya sinasabi. 
Minsan slanted yung news, minsan garbled. But here's what I observed today. Alam mo na, parang nawawala na sa mga tao yung tinatawag na active at saka intentional listening. And to me, uh, isa sa mga culprits dyan, dapat <laughs> sisihin natin itong uh, ating mga gadgets. Kita mo ba? Mga tao, puro na lang. Ganito. They don't take time to listen. You know, in my, in my seminars, leadership seminars, um, ginagawa ko lagi ito na activity. No? Nagkikreate ako ng uh, group, couple, okay? Two per- persons, partner, and then we practice listening. Yung isa muna magsalita, ito makikinig. Wala siyang kahit anong sasabihin. Magkikwento siya, wala siyang sasabihin. Makinig lang siya. And titingnan mo sa mata. Ang requirement ko, look the person in the eye, the one who talks, the one who talks, you're listening to him. Lean forward, look them in the eye. Okay? Okay? And assimilate what they're saying. Alam niyo ba kung paano tayo nakikinig ngayon? Okay? Minsan, guilty din ako. Okay? <laughs> I admit to you. Ito, nagyan ito tayo makinig. Oh. Oh, so, anong... Eh? Okay. So, ano nangyari ule? Ano sabi? Actually, it's a disrespect to the person who's talking to you when you keep on looking at your cell phone. When they are speaking to you. So listening. Practice becoming a good listener to your kids. Ask questions. Then stop talking and just listen. Kailangan nyo pong skill na to. Kailangan yung skill na to. Sa bagong normal ng education. Kasi madaming questions yung mga bata. I'm sure of it. Madaming clarification, madaming tanong. You have to listen. Okay, and then lastly, last but not least important is you are a collaborator. <laughs> In a good sense, okay? <laughs> Ibig ko lang sabihin dyan. You partner with the school and with the teachers and you are a great team. Teamwork ang kailangan dito eh. I cannot overemphasize the importance of teamwork. You know, in our homeschool, um, we have several academic advisors, and um, they are assigned a number of families or parents or, or children, homeschoolers, and they keep communicating with the parents. And the objective of this communication is for the the best. Okay. For, for 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 the for their homeschooler or the student to give them the best so very important to establish that kind of relationship i would say uh with your teachers simulan niyo na ngayon mga parents kilala niyo ng mga parents mga mga teachers ng mga anak niyo talk to them connect with them get their numbers kasi Pag magandang relationship nyo dyan sa kanila, pwede nyo sila tawagan, pwede nyo anytime. Tutulong naman yung mga teachers eh. Okay? Be humble. Appreciate them. Yun. Gawin nyo yun. Sampong papel. Kailangan yung gampanan, mga parents. Upang maging successful kayo. Dito sa bagong normal ang sistema ng pag-aaral which is distance. Distance learning. Non face-to-face. Kailangan nyo lahat gawin yan. Isulat nyo yan, pag-isipan nyo, sundin nyo, and I promise you, I promise you, you will succeed. In training your kids, you succeed in the academic 
excellence, progress, accomplishments of your children. Okay? Now, I'll end this first part. These 10 rules and functions can be summed up in one word. <laughs> Kasi baka nagtatanong ko, saan yung love doon? Saan yung, hindi, hindi, Paul, hindi ka nagsasabi man lang ng love. Yan, lahat yan, love. <laughs> yung sampo na yan. And I would add, it's unconditional love. Unconditional love. Because it's gonna take sacrifice on your part. Magsasakripisyo ka talaga dyan. Eh. May trade-off yan eh. Do you want to have a great kid? Academically, character-wise, you, you need to sacrifice. You need to do lots of all the 10 things that I've shared with you today. So, the 10 roles, functions that I told you about, it spells, they spell L-O-V-E. You're going to do it because you love your children. children. Regardless of who they are, what they are, and ugali nila, you have unconditional love for them. And you are willing to go out of your way to sacrifice to make sure that they get great education. So I'll wrap up with some tips. This is just practical tips um, for uh, an effective dis distance learning in the home, the home setting. Ito lang, ha? Um, kasi nga sa homeschool kami, mayroon talaga siyang set up sa bahay, you know, na very effective siya. Number one, create a study station at home. This is just practical. That is conducive to learning. Mag-identify na kayo ng lugar sa bahay ninyo. Saan ba uupo yung mga anak ninyo at mag-aaral? Sasabihin ko sa, kanyo, sa inyo yung lugar na hindi bagay, okay? Sa harap ng TV. Okay? Sa harap ng TV. Don't do it there. Mag-select kayo ng quiet corner. <laughs> Tandaan ko yung natira kami dati doon sa squatters, you know. Kaya maliit lang yung, sobrang liit lang, no? Yung, yung, yung kwarto na rinentahan namin ng asawa ko sa mga anak ko, dalawang babae. But still, they have a place where they they work. And lagi sila doon, hindi sa harap ng TV. Kahit nyo yan, ganda na eh. Uh, yan. It's home school there. Let's ask sa'yo. Yan example, may table sa dyan, and organized, malinis, di ba? So, lagi siya dyan, every day, nandyan siya. Her name is Ashray. She is my uh, granddaughter. Apo ko yan, nasa Dubai yan siya. No? She's home school. Uh, so, mayroon sa lagi siyang um, academic workstation. Number two, establish and observe Agreed school hours. Hindi ho pwedeng na ngayong araw, uh, between 8 to 10 ka, bukas, sa apong ka naman. And iba-iba-iba. Uh, walang, uh, walang regularity yan. Walang consistency. Very unstable yan. Kailangan talaga mag-establish ka ng school hours. Okay? Sa mga anak mo. And then enforce it. Like again, I show you a picture. May oras yan. Dapat na nakaupo na siya dyan sa particular time. No? At saka kahit homeschool siya, may baon yan. May baon siya, okay? May uniform pa nga eh. Nag-uniform yan. So, in other words, gawin niya talaga siya parang school setting, para ang feeling, psychologically, yung feeling ng bata, talaga nasa school siya. Kahit na nasa bahay siya. Hindi pwedeng nakapajama na siya, nakashort na siya, na, you know, di siya nakaligo. It affects their thinking. Kung yun ang itsura nila. But kung naka-uniform sila, Nandiyan sila sa tamang oras, then it's really a school environment. Okay? You simulate a school environment. Napakaganda po noon. Pangatlo, create and enforce rules on the use of gadget. Again, nasabi ko na yan kanina. Gawan niyo talaga yan. Hindi pwedeng magugulo yung isip ng mga bata habang nag-aaral sila. Kailangan focus yung mga bagong material ngayon ng DepEd. Hindi pwede talaga. Of course, uh, for the online learners, <laughs> nandun na sila sa computer, okay? And everything is there. So, okay lang yun. But, but they cannot switch, you know, screens na, oh, 
Nag-aaral ka dito, lilipat ka muna. Uy, may, may, mayroon kasing nag-message sa akin sa Facebook. Oh, manood ko muna, sang, manunood muna ako ng YouTube. Ganito may maganda. Hindi pwede ganon. Okay? Kailangan talaga uh, enforce. Kung online ka, how many hours you're, you need to be there or you're supposed to be there, enforce natin yan sa mga anak natin. Okay? Get? Sinabi ko na kanina, create and follow a routine. Daily man yun, the start of the day, planuhin mo. O weekly routine. By the way, sabi ng anak ko, uh, nag-share sa akin, kailangan maging creative din tayo. Siyempre, week, hindi tayo alas, uh, create some fun in your house. Create some games na parang may break naman yung mga bata. No? Create some kind of activities na uh, para ma- ma-divert naman yung, may diversion naman yung mga bata. Para hindi naman sila ma- sobrang ma-bored. Okay? But there has to be a routine. Um, you don't just insert certain activities probably related to uh, what they're learning so that uh, they have fun also. Number five is a quote that I made, okay? For you. You have to create an island of discipline for your children in the sea of chaos around you. You have to create an island of discipline for your children in the sea of chaos around you. Folks, listen, you know the reality? We used to live in the squatters area back there in Alabang. That area is filled with drugs, violence, crimes. I have a house, I have a room there with my kids. My wife and I created an island in that sea of confusion and chaos and crime. And kids with no discipline running all around, not in school, we created an island of discipline where our kids can function, can concentrate on their studies, can read, okay? It's up to you. It's in your hands, parents. Create that island. Be different. Be different. So those are just some practical stuff I'd like to share with you. Be- before we go to part two, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to have gonna Jeff come up and maybe uh, a few comments or a few questions I will entertain uh, based on the lessons I gave today. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this material. I love studying it and I enjoy sharing. Although I cannot see you, <laughs> I hope you can see me well and, and could hear me well. Thank you. Before, just have a few minutes break before I go to the second part. Okay, Jeff, can you hear me? Okay. Can you see my presentation, Jeff? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm ready to go. So, welcome back to our lesson. This is just a bonus lesson that I will give you. As you know, I'm also a pastor. I'm a Bible teacher. I teach every Sunday. We have a Facebook page in Faith Baptist Church, South Metro. And I teach there every week. Okay, share the Word of God, Bible study. But uh, some of this... Uh, you know, I forgot to tell you that in the school that I'm the president now, many years ago, my kids uh, uh, transferred from the public school to uh, this school, the Philippine Christian School of Tomorrow, this, I think in the 90s. And, siyempre po yung COVID school. Alam nyo ba nung ginawa namin ng wife ko? Nag-volunteer ako dyan na maging values teacher sa school at saka basketball coach para lang mabawasan na makakayahan ako yung yung uh, bayad sa tuition fee. Tsaka yung um, wife ko nag-start siya na mag-teach din doon sa mga kinder. So, ganun pong istorya. Now, itong si-share ko ngayon sa inyo, actually, there is a higher calling for parents, no? There's a higher calling for parents. So, and the topic is the five indispensable to me, ah, values that we should teach our children. Alam niyo na sa bahay na sila ngayon eh, atin na atin na talaga mga anak natin eh. We, we have, we're in control of them. We're spending time with them every day. Talagang we have an opportunity. Again, sabi ko nga sa inyo, it, it turn natin into positive. What can we teach now? Sa mga bata na nandito sila, we have more time. So yung five values na to, indispensable values, is actually the key to real success in their academics 
and in their life. Okay, folks, in their academics, but life is not just about academics. You have to, they have to succeed in other parts of their life, their social life, okay? Their work life someday when they graduate. What you teach them today in terms of values, they will carry it and will make them successful. When they go out from your home, they get married, they work, they become part of the society on their own. Magiging uh, successful dito sila. So ito po yung gusto kong share sa inyo. Lima po. But the goal of parents for the children must not say, ito mo na sabihin ko, must not be only academic learning or excellence, but the development of their mental, emotional, moral, and spiritual well-being. Nakita niyo yan? This is a more serious, this is life now. I'm talking about life. Your kids, they have a soul. They are thinking. They, are, they have emotions. We are responsible. Now, of course, we appreciate the teachers. Again, sabi ni Jeff kanina, what I said earlier, I don't discount the role of the teachers because alam nyo, kailangan natin ng teachers talaga. That's why I say work hand in hand with the teachers because sa higher years, talagang kailangan na ng help ng teachers. And we should appreciate our teachers for their role in the academic learning of our kids. But in this part of my presentation today, I'm going to focus on the mental, emotional, moral, and spiritual being of the kids, of our children. Okay. So understanding and fulfilling parental responsibility. This is your responsibility. Whether you like it or not, responsibility mo pagturo o pagtrain ng mga anak mo, ang anak natin. Parental responsibility means you possess the authority. You have the authority to, to teach. You are accountable as a parent for your children. And you are the leader in the home. So yung tatlo na yan, tingnan natin isa-isa po. So understanding parental authority, you have the legal power over your children. Okay, just very quickly lang. In fact, the Constitution says, Article 2, Section 12, the natural and primary right and duty of parents in the rearing of youth, of the youth for civic efficiency and the development of moral character shall receive the support of the government. So the Constitution provides, Constitution provides a legal power for you to train and to rear your children. What does this mean? Train and teach. Inner character. Values. Yun ang ituturo natin which coming up in this presentation. Also, it includes the control and regulate. No? So the external enforcement of humility. This may be a new concept to you. Parents, kailangan natin i-enforce yung humility. How do you do that? Obedience. Do not allow your kids to be disobedient to you and to disrespect you. If your children gets away, pinabayaan nyo sila na okay lang na i-disrespect kayo, sigawang kayo, o mag yung mga bata sa inyo. Here's what I'm telling you. You have in your hands a future criminal. Okay? I'm telling you that. Do not allow them. You need to discipline. That's part of your authority. That's part of your responsibility and authority to discipline, to correct our kids. The very critical uh, num uh, age group is the 0 to 12 years old. Let me talk about this for a while. Yung bata, mga anak natin, 0 to 12, turuan na natin yan eh. Disiplinahin na natin yan. Kasi yung idea na, ah, paglaki na lang niya kasi maliit pa siya, hindi ko siya sasawayin, hindi ko siya didisiplinahin, kasi bata pa naman yun eh. You know how wrong that thinking is. Because if you, do, if you don't do a good job between one, between zero to six or seven years old sa mga anak nyo, alam nyo, you are gonna have a hard time when they grow to eight, ten, become teenager, magiging mahihirapan ho kayo kasi hindi nyo na-form yung structure sa, sa sarili nila, sa, sa, sa kaluluwa nila of the discipline. So critical po yung 0 to 12 po na edad ng mga bata. 
Yan po talaga yung age group na kailangan turuan natin ng obedience sa mga bata. About 2,600 years ago, may isang hari yung Israel, si King Solomon. Kasi sumulat siya dun sa Book of Proverbs. Alam niyo, napakaganda na sinabi niya. Whoever does not discipline his son, hates him. Akala mo, hindi mo didisiplina yung anak mo dahil mahal mo siya. Actually, pag hindi mo siya didisiplina, hindi mo siya mahal, sabi ng Bible. Hindi mo siya mahal. Why? Pinapabayaan mo lang siya. And he's going off the cliff. Masisira yung buhay ng bata pag hindi siya disiplinado eh. Okay, so sinasabi dito ng ni King Solomon, the richest king who ever lived in the past. Whoever does not discipline his son, hates him. But whoever loves him is diligent to correct him. Diligent means consistent discipline. You have a rule, you have a policy, you have some guidelines in the home, stick with it. Gawin na natin ho ito para magtitrain tayo ho ng mga bata, ang magandang mga bata in the future. Number two, responsibility also means you are accountable. Kailangan talaga i-accept natin yung accountability sa mga anak natin. Eh. Hindi tayo magtuloy. <laughs> anak natin yan eh, di ba? Hindi natin pwede ituro kay kumpare kumari yung pagkakamali ng anak natin eh. Tama? Atin anak yun eh. We are accountable. We have an obligation. Here's a good one. You own the results of how your kids turn out. And kinlawalify ko lang doon, habang nandyan sila sa inyo, under your roof. Minsan pag nainis, ta, may mga naranig tayo ng mga film, minsan pag nainis sa mga bata, kanino ba anak to? Parang hindi ko to anak eh. <laughs> no, really? No? Anak mo yon, okay? <laughs> But see, you own the results of how your kids turn out. That's accountability. Parents, let me tell you something. Hindi mo pwedeng i-blame yung teacher kung anong naging kinahatna ng anak mo. You cannot blame the teachers, all the people out there for how your kids turn out. You know, the other day, I was listening to a black speaker in the US. Di ba? Masyadong magulo sa US ngayon. Mga riots, they kill police, killings, racial. So much problem right now on the streets. Grabbing chaos. Alam mo, sabi ng isang black na speaker, na teacher, eh, sino ba nagtitrain ng mga anak natin? Bakit maraming murders sa labas? Manaming patayan. Saan ba nanggagaling yung mga kriminal na yun? Sa bahay natin, hindi ba? Alam mo, napaisip ako, oo nga, no? That criminal who killed that person, that criminal who burned businesses, At one point in their life, they they were a kid and they belong to a family. Wow, malalim na? Kaya napakalaga na turuan natin sa bahay natin yung ating mga anak ng tama. And we are accountable if we don't teach them the values that will guide them. Compass nila yung values eh sa pamumuhay nila kahit saan man sila mapunta later on. So please understand. You own the results. Wala kang kailangan, wala kang, uh, wala kang dapat i-blame doon sa mga anak mo. The kind of kids you want to, re- you, the kind of kids you rest so in your house. Kung anong gusto mong klaseng mga anak, nasa kamay mo yan eh. <laughs> nasa kamay mo. Okay? Kung anong gusto mong mag-turn out yung mga anak mo na sa kamay mo yan. Number three, leader po tayo sa bahay. Nanay, tatay, leader po tayo sa bahay. Develop strong influence sa mga bata. Ito, nabanggit din kanina, ito relationship building. Lalo na pag uh, tumatawid na sa teens ang mga anak natin, alam mo, pag 12, 13 years old na, 18 years old, hindi na uubra sa mga batang yan yung sigaw-sigawan mo, ganun-ganun. Hindi mo na hindi na uubra sa kanila yun eh kasi malaki na sila eh. So kailangan dito ibang approach. You build a relationship, no? 
listening. Nasabi ko na kanina yon. Yung mga teenagers, kailangan lang minsan yan. Tenga eh. Kasi ang teenage day years sa mga bata, yan ang time na naturally rebellious sila. They don't want authority. They don't want to be told. They think they know everything. When in reality, they know very little. Teenager pa lang sila. Transition yan eh. Transition years yan eh. From uh, a child to becoming an adult. So, hindi siya bata, hindi rin siya adult. Dito siya sa middle. Kailangan siyang pakinggan. Kailangan siyang motivate to inspire. Again, sinabi ko na kanina, dream building. Kasi leader ka eh. You're a leader in them. So, that's part of your umaga, responsibility. Okay. Here, you demonstrate unconditional love. Here. Alam nyo, madami kong kakilala ang mga colleagues ko sa trabaho sa corporate world na successful sila, mat matas yung position nila, malaking sahod nila, very popular sila, successful sa nila, pero sa bahay, sad to say, sila yung bahay nila, yung home nila. Mga anak nila, wayward, Nasa drugs. Lahat na vices involved. Da dati nang sa nagtatrabaho ako dito sa isang mayaman na village. Eh. Mga prominent mga tao dyan nakatira dyan. Pero in the middle of the night, sometimes I get a call. Call patulong naman dito sa anak ko. Nagwawala, binabasag lahat ng mga gamit sa bahay. High na high sa drugs. Eh. O, bakit yung... You know why? The kids don't care about their father, whether he's the president of the company, yung position niya, yung success niya. Yung question lang ng mga bata eh. Mahal ba ako ng parents ko nito? Mahal ba ako ng tatay ko? She care for me? Kailangan eh. Sabi nga ni John Maxwell, people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. So, wala yan. Kailangan talaga maintindihan na natin yung leadership role natin sa bahay as parents. Unconditional love. Huwag nyo i-base yung love nyo sa behavior ng mga bata, mga anak niya. Hindi unconditional love yan eh. Yes, you discipline, but you accept your kids as they are. Kahit ano man ang pagkakamali nila, kahit anong mistakes nila, you still express love. Kasi yung love mo sa kanila dapat unconditional eh. God's love for you is unconditional. We are sinners for bad. But God loves us anyway. You see, yun ang pattern. Eh. So please, understand that. Demonstrate unconditional love, care, understanding, and respect. Especially doon sa mga medyo teenagers na ng mga bata. Okay? So intentional talaga training. The family is a basic unit. Nabanggit kanita ni Jeffrey. Um, the family is the basic unit of society. Is the backbone of our nation. Folks, yan ang backbone talaga. The strength of our nation lies in the strength and stability of our homes. Kung sobrang magulo yung home natin, maraming broken homes, broken families, alam mo, unstable yung bansa. Kasi napiperpetuate lang yung dysfunction sa mga homes eh. Kung ikaw ay, kung ikaw ay uh, lumaki ka sa isang dysfunctional home, like I have been, you know, dysfunctional yung home ko eh, because we have an alcoholic in the house. So, Kailangan mo i-stop mo yung cycle eh. Kasi pwedeng naging alcoholic din ako. So you just perpetuate the dysfunction. It destroys the family. Our children are the future of our country. So the question is, what kind of citizens bang pinaproduce natin ngayon? Listen, in our hands, in our home, dun sa bahay natin, yung mga batang palakadlaka tumatakbo dyan, yun ang future ng bayan natin, folks. Yung mga anak mo, yan ang future ng bansang Pilipinas. That's why kailangan talaga intentional training. Hindi po automatic yung parental training. Hindi po otomo dyan. You really have to be intentional about it and plan it and teach it deliberately. Our children today will become future parents who will train the coming generation. See? Dapat ipainherit natin sa mga bata natin. Nakakatawa yung... <laughs> no, for many years, mahilig ako mag-journal, no? Uh, I practice journal, lalo na pag nag-meditate ako. Uh, 
you know, salita ng Diyos, nag-meditate, sumusulat ako. Yung mga anak ko, dalawang anak namin, growing up, hindi ko naman sila sinabihan na mag-journal naman sila. Pero since nakikita ka nila araw-araw, nag-journal ka, nag- sumusulat ka ng mga thoughts mo. Nakita ko lang, gumagawa na rin sila. Up to today, my, my eldest daughter, she's already 40 years old. Yung sa 38. Ginagawa nila ngayon. And the funny thing is, you know, just a few months ago, may picture, mapinadala yung anak ko sa Dubai, si Sharon. Picture yun ng, ng notes ng apo ko. <laughs> just like, siya rin, pag nakikinig siya dun sa lesson niya, gumagawa rin siya ng journal, gumagawa rin siya ng kung anong natutunan niya. So, that's something that you perpetuate. You know, kung ano yung values nyo ngayon, tandaan nyo, kailangan yung good values pa-perpetuate sa next generation. Nakakatuwa yung ganyan. So again, I'll quote King Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs. Train a child how to live the right way. That's your job. That's your job as a parent. He's talking about to the parents. Then even when he is old, he will still live that way. Hindi ba napakasarap tingnan na kaya ako, lolo na ko, nakikita ko yung mga anak ko, they live a good life, a righteous life, a life of integrity, a life of happiness because they made good choices sa buhay nila eh. They made good choices sa buhay nila, sa education nila, sa marriage nila, they have marriage, good family. Train a child. Saan nagsimula yun? Nung maliit pa sila. You have to train them so that when they become old, they will still live that way. Yung values na tinuro niya sa kanila. Isa bubuhay pa rin nila yun eh. So, um, here we go. Very quickly, I'm sharing with you five indispensable values kailangan ituro natin. Nasa, nasa puder natin ngayon mga anak natin. Please, kung di nyo pa nagawa to, I'm, I'm not assuming na hindi, lahat kayo hindi nyo ginawa. I'm assuming some of you have already, you know, in the past, uh, taught your kids and, you know, normally in a day, pwede nyo ituro sa kanila. So, number one, the value the value of honor and integrity yan talagang number one. Now, folks listen walang perpektong tao sa mundo okay walang hindi nagkakasala la tayo may mga failures tayo including me no kung failures ko lang yung pag-uusapan maghapon tayo rito hindi tayo matapos pero iba kasi yung honor and integrity Turuan natin yung mga bata. Karakter nila yun eh. Yung honor and integrity. Naintindihan nyo naman ibig sabihin ng honor, no? Karangalan. Teach them to be honorable. And teach them to have integrity. But these two things, are they are more caught than taught. <laughs> yeah, yan yung isa ng problema dyan. Kasi nakukuha ng mga bata yan sa nakikita nila eh. Hindi po taliwang buhay natin sa sabi na sa mga anak natin. Kung nagtuturo tayo sa kanila ng honesty at saka nakikita nila yung dishonesty natin, hindi magkatugma, hindi ba? That's why I say integrity and honor and honesty, it is more caught than caught. Pag honest ka, may integrity kang parent, more or, more or less, makikita ng mga anak mo, susundin nila yan. It's a good motto tong isang moto ko sa company ko eh no sa mga employees ko sa mga managers ko I will not lie cheat or steal or tolerate those who do actually honor code yan ng uh, United States Military Academy pero it's a good it's a good motto right it's a good value I give you an example itong ginagawa may mga cases ng mga parents, even sa homeschool, sila yung gumagawa ng trabaho ng mga students, sa mga anak nila para mamadali na lang. Never do that, okay? It's going to be a temptation. Parents, listen to me, listen. It's going to be a temptation para mapadali ka na lang yung worksheets ng anak mo, ikaw yung mag-fill in, ikaw gagawa lahat. Tapos yung submit mo, never do that because you are teaching your kid dishonesty. Okay? Let them do it, guide them, help them, make them understand. But don't do it for them because it's not part of the system. The system says they are the ones who have to work on their academic materials. Agree with me? Okay. So first, that's the first one. 
And here's, never forget. If you forgot everything that I said today, wag mong kalimutan ito. Academic excellence and achievements without integrity and character is not true success. Hindi yan totoong success eh. Yeah, mga tao, maganda yung pinag-aralan nila. Maraming letters. Pagkatapos na kanilang pangalan. Hindi ba maraming tao ganyan? Sinabi ko kanina sa inyo, yung trabaho ko is fraud investigator for 25 years. No? Um, Inahire ako po dito sa Pilipinas at sa ibang bansa para mag uh, unearth lang to determine yung sinong nagnakaw magkanong ninakaw, paano makuha yung ninakaw. Ngayon, alam niyo naman, may ongoing investigation ngayon sa gobyerno natin, sa Senate ngayon. Uh, talagang yan, kung may isa mo nakakalungkot sa bayan natin, no, yan ang nakakalungkot. Eh. I'm depressed when I think of these things. Kasi, hindi lang po sa government yan. Uh, ako, yung investigation ko po sa private sector. Yung mga companies. Can you imagine naging invest yung hapon dito, yung mga Amerikano, to you know, millions and millions of dollars to create factories, no? lahat na businesses dito ng mga foreigners, nag invest sila para may trabaho ang mga Pilipino. Tama? Para may hanap buhay tayo, para may prosperity yung bansa natin, which is good, which is biblical. Mayayari. Nanakawan mo ba naman yan? And folks, mind you, kaya sinasabi ko dyan, academic excellence and achievement is not really true success if there is no integrity in character. Yung mga taong itong nagkukumit nitong mga anomalya, mga fraud, marami itong letters after their name. Graduate ito ng mga prominent schools sa bansa na alam nyo na, hindi ko nasasabihin. Marami silang degrees. Director sila, manager sila, busy presidente sila ng mga kumpanya, and yet, they steal. That's what I mean. When I say achievements, position, excellence, academic performance, without character and integrity, can you call that a success? That's why it's important that I you understand what I'm sharing with you today, the values. So number one, honor and integrity. Number two, self-discipline. Ito i-inculcate natin sa mga batang disiplina sa sarili nila. Self-control. Ito, the ability to control and regulate oneself. Alam mo ba na yung batang disiplinado will have less supervision? Ito kailangan ma-achieve nyo talaga. Ito napakahalaga nito. Mas madali kasi sa inyo na parents. Lalo na sa new normal ngayon. Pag disiplinado yung anak mo kasi less supervision siya eh. As compared to an undisciplined kid na araan, oras, oras, sasabihin mo, sige na, continue ka na, bakit dito ka na naman, bakit lumabas ka na naman? No. A kid who is focused on self-discipline will finish the job with less supervision. Ito, turo natin sa kanila, oh, delayed gratification and the exercise of self-restraint. Delayed gratification. Gawin mo muna. Gawin mo muna, do the work first. Pay now, play later. Kasi yung taong walang disiplina, hanggang tumanda siya na wala siyang disiplina, he will not, uh, la, he will not, he or she will not have happiness in his life, in her life. A person who is undisciplined is an unhappy person. Kasi kailangan lagi may nag-stimulate sa kanya. Hindi siya disiplinado eh. Hindi ka disiplinado sa pera. Hindi ka disiplinado sa kain. Hindi ka disiplinado sa oras. Can you imagine that? You see, and this, that's why I said, you know, sa bahay nyo, you create an island of discipline. Kasi lahat nun, masyadong common yung undisciplined people. Sa traffic lang eh. Now, which by the way, ako rin, nag-violate din ako from time to time. But self-discipline. The ability to regulate yourself. And to stop yourself from doing something that you want to do because there are other considerations that is that are more important. Mas may, mas, hindi mo gagawin to kasi mas, mas mamahalaga eh. Okay. Turuan natin mga anak natin yan. 
So wala talagang totoong success din kung walang self-discipline. Marami akong gwardiya eh, no? di ba may agency ako. Malalaman mo talaga dyan. Ang gwardiya, matutulog siya sa pwesto nila. Walang disiplina. Walang respeto sa sarili, walang disiplina. So, turuan natin yung mga anak natin. Ingrain natin sa mind nila yan. No? How do you teach self-discipline sa mga bata? Enforce obedience. Enforce. Because pag palagi mong nag-insist ka to enforce a rule, a policy, a system, self-discipline will happen as a habit. Pag habit na nila yung self-discipline, napakaganda po. The most admirable kids are self-disciplined kids. Okay? The most admirable kids are self-disciplined kids. Make it happen in your home. Number three, itong nawawala na rin ngayon. Marami tayong nakikita sa social media yung tinatawag na respect. Turuan natin yung mga anak natin, ha? Respect. There's so much disrespect around us. Make your home different. Ibahin nyo yung bahay ninyo. Teach your kids, you have to respect una-una people in authority, those who are over you. The elders. You know, when maliit pa kami, naglalakad kami sa, sa street, pag gabi na sa 6 o'clock, kahit sinong matanda sa amin na makasalubong namin, tinuturo namin ng nanay namin, sumagsabi ka na magandang gabi po, kahit di mo kilala yan, kahit stranger yan. Why? We were taught respect toward others. To give deference. No? So, turuan natin yung mga anak natin, respect toward authority. Don't allow them to badmouth their teacher. Listen, listen. Itong nangyayari minsan, yung mga nanay, sinasabayan nila yung mga anak nila na kinikritisize yung teachers. Never do that. You destroy the authority, the moral authority of the teacher when you as a parent, sasabayan ninyo po yung mga anak ninyo in their criticism against their teachers. Sawayin niyo po sila. Demand niyo yung mga bata magrespeto sila sa mga teachers nila, sa principal nila, sa hierarchy ng authority, sa coach nila. Kasi wala silang mapuntahan. Okay? Now, wherever you go, there will always be authority. Pag drive mo sa labas dyan, may authority dyan, may police dyan eh. Pag trabaho mo sa kumpanya, may authority dyan eh. Someone will always be over you. So if you don't learn to respect authority, you will not succeed in your career, in your job, in your life. Okay, very important. Respect the rights, privacy, and freedom of others. Don't allow your kids to malign people or to attack people, to disrespect people. Whatever form. Respect always people's rights. Teach your kids. Alamatan ng mga tao yan. Privacy ng mga tao yan. Kung anumang pagkakamali nila, anong ginawa nila sa kanila yan. Respetuhin mo. The freedom of others. Allow, the, allow others to make their own choices. Ituro natin po sa mga bata. Hindi yung pika... Pigilan natin yung mga anak natin na maging pakialamero, pakialamera sa mga buhay ng ibang tao. Kaya lang nakukuha rin ng mga bata sa atin yun. So, you know. But, turuan natin. Property. Turuan natin mga anak natin. Pag hindi sa'yo, huwag mong kunin. Pag hindi sa'yo, huwag mong pakialaman. Alam niyo yung maliit pa dalawang anak namin. Siguro mga kindergarten pa lang yung panganay kasi yung five years old. Three years old yung bunso ko. Eh, nang uwi ako, galing ako sa duty guard. Ako may dalawa kong Uh, chocolate bars. No? So, isa yan. So, nag-aaral. Ang nasa bahay lang yung bunso ko. Three years old pa lang siya. Chocolate. Tapos yung anak ko panganay, kinder siya, nag-aaral siya. Eh. So, nandun lang sa baso yung ano niya, sa lamesa. Yung chocolate niya kasi parating pa lang siya. Eh. So, yung bunso ko kinahin ko na. Alam mo, after mga one hour, nakita namin ng wife ko, wala na yung ano, wala, wala na yung <laughs> chocolate sa lamesa. O oh, para to kay Sherlock wala na. <clears throat> May kumuha. <coughs> Sino man kumuha? Kami lang sa bahay, di ba? Tinawag siya. Oh. Alam mo yung anak kong bunso, may ugali yun na ah. pag nagsisinungaling siya, gumaganon siya sa kamay niya. <laughs> Tatawa kami niya. Sino kumuha ng ano ng uh, tsokolate ni uh, ni Manang mo dito? Alam mo ba sabi niya sa? Baka yung pusa. <laughs> ano ba ilong ko pasi siya no? Basi yung kuring, ano? Basi ang kuring, maybe the cat. Alam mo, 
three years old ah. Nadidisiplina ko yan. Napapalo namin yan. Kahit soft nila, napapalo namin. Why? We are teaching her respect for property of others. Of course, narinig ng lola niya yung mother ko. Magkano ba yan? Chocolate na yan. Mamili na yun. You see, mga lola, ganyan. But it's not the point. I'm teaching my kid how to respect the property that belongs to others. Don't touch it. Oh, boy. I hope I can teach this in the companies around this, the semiconductor companies I'm selling you. Uh, massive thefts in many of these companies. Massive stealing. Okay? Why? Magmaliit pa yung mga bata. Hindi sila naturuan to respect property of others. Number four. Should teach our kids high sense of responsibility and accountability. Ito. Ito rin. Kasi pag wala silang sense of responsibility and accountability, later on, tatrabaho sila. Pangit yung performance nila sa trabaho. Hindi nila natatapos yung task. Hindi nila nagagawa yung dapat nila gawin. Productivity nila low. Why? They, not take, they don't take upon themselves the responsibility and the accountability to produce what they need to produce. Ito, ito. Turuan natin mga bata. Take responsibility. Ginawa mo yun eh. Ginawa mo yun. Nasaktan ka dahil sa ginawa mo. Take responsibility. Make them admit their mistakes. Don't allow your kids to cover up the things that they do wrong. Huwag yung allow na takpan. Because you're not teaching them sense of responsibility. May ginawa ka, may decision ka. Don't let them blame somebody else always for the things and the wrongs that they, that they do. They must, they, here, they must finish the task they committed to do. Kunyari, dun sa uh, yun yung normal natin. Sabi natin, itong goal niya, someday, kasi isang week lang kailangan niya tapusin yung materials. It's designed for a week. So kailangan niya tapusin yun. You are responsible. Auntie Mano, sabihin natin, anak, okay, Monday ngayon, ito yung schedule mo this week, tapusin mo talaga yun. Responsibility mo yun. At accountable ka nun pag hindi mo natapos. Mahihirapan ka, magka-clog up ka dito pag hindi mo natapos yan. Magsuslow down ka, mahihirapan ka. That's teaching them a high sense of responsibility. That's a value, folks. That sana sa mga bahay natin na tuturo natin. Ito pa, the kids must be allowed to experience the consequence of their bad choices. Huwag natin payagan na laging, o oh, sige, ginawa nila, mali. May pain dyan, may suffering, kukubir natin, isishield natin lagi sila. Pag sinishield mo lagi mga bata sa consequence ng mali na ginawa nila, they will not learn the lesson. Let them experience some pain. Some discomfort. Dapat maintindihan nila na pag bad yung decision nila, may suffering yan, may bad consequence yan. But pag good yung decision nila, may reward yan. Yan ang basic na basic talaga. Sense of responsibility. The ability to assume full responsibility for one's own action. Wow. Which hindi mo makikita ngayon yan. Sa mga taong iniimbestigahan, puro sila turo, di ba? Bira ka lang makakita eh. Na. Yung mga hapon, ang ganda ng kultura nila, no? Pag may kamali sila talaga, they come out saying they made a mistake. They resign, no? Yung alam, minsan hindi ma-bear na iba, nakaharakiri sila. <laughs> Extreme naman yun, ano? Pero sa atin hanggang makalusot, lusot tayo, no? We don't take responsibility for our actions at all. So, true natin sa mga bata. Then, number five, and this is the end. The last one. But the most important one. Spiritual faith. Kanina na-touch ako eh. Pag simula pa lang ng programa ito. Two things touch my heart at the beginning of this webinar. Una yung nag-aawit yung mga bata ng uh, pambansang awit. Yung video. Nakikita ko na yun. Alam mo, kahit isang daang beses ko na nakikita ang video na yan, Jeff. Nahiyak pa rin ako. Nakikita ko yung mukha ng mga bata. Batang Pilipino na kailangan tulong, kailangan tulungan, kailangan erase ng tama. 
That's why I'm doing what I do. I do no? to help the youth of our country. Pangalawang nakatat sa akin yung prayer. No? The fact that we have freedom in this nation. I don't know what religion is. I don't know. But so China, yon. Bawal yung just doni. Eh. No? Sinasara nila yung mga simbahan, Christian man yan, Katoliko man yan, lahat mga simbahan, sinasara nila, inuhuli nila yung mga ministers doon ng gospel. Sa China ngayon. Pero tayo sa bansa ng Pilipinas, may prayer pa tayo eh. Kasi we believe in God. Nakakatouch. Kasi sa totoo lang, hindi natin pwede ibukod yung Diyos sa buhay natin. Tapon, habang nagpiprepare ako nitong lesson ko sa inyo, I got two emails. And you know those two emails, maybe three hours apart. are two new clients sa negosyo ko na matagal ko nang pinagpapray. So, they said, yes, we will get your company, you're gonna start September. But that's big business for me. But folks, here's my point. I emailed my team, my management team, said, finally, God gave us these clients. Because hindi ko pwedeng i-separate ang Diyos doon sa ginagawa akong negosyo eh. Nakuha nyo? Neither you. Hindi nyo pwedeng i-separate yung Diyos na ito academic to, hindi involved ang Diyos dyan. Hello? God must be involved in our life. Tingnan natin to. Si Moses, kilala nyo naman si Moses, no? Yung The Exodus, yung naman panood yung movie. Leader siya ng Jewish nation before eh. No, ng Lumabas yung mga Hudyo galing sa Egypt. Napaka-significant na sinabi ng Diyos sa kanya, ng tinuro ni Moses, many years ago. So, ito yung sinabi ni Moses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Unang-una pala yun talaga, no? With all your soul, with all your strength. Yung mga anak ba natin, kinukonect ba natin sila sa Panginoon? These commandments, sabi ng God, Diyos, that I give you today, no, God is the one speaking, are to be on your hearts. Ito po yung topic ko, kaya, kaya ko binring up ito. Uh, last year, nagsalita po ako dun sa Dubai sa mga convention ng mga parents namin, sa mga teachers. Ito po yun. These commandments that I give you today are to be on y- in your hearts. Impress them on your children. Wow, that's your responsibility as a parent. Talk about them when you sit at home. Pag nakaupo lang kayo. And when you walk along the road. Informal, no? Actually, education. Noong unang araw, wala naman school, eh. The responsibility for training the kids lies in the parent. Talagang parent lang talagang may moral responsibility, may assignment sa Diyos na mag-train. So, paano? Talk them when you sit at home. O, today, pag nag-sit at home ka, puro TV na lang, di ba? When you walk on the road, habang naglalakad ka, turuan mo yung anak mo daw tungkol sa Diyos. When you lie down and when you get up, pag nakahiga siya, you know, bedtime stories, turuan mo siya. When they get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. In other words, make it visible. visible create visible reminders sa mga anak natin about God. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. Because here, Below, look at that. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but he loses his own soul? Folks, yan ang formula ng success sa buhay na walang Diyos. You can become successful. You can become rich. You become, you, your kids can become prominent. Don't make that your goal, number one goal sa mga anak ninyo. Make your goal fear of God sa mga anak ninyo. And I promise you, Based on my own experience, my own experience with many people, if you put God first, God will take care of your success. If you put God first. 
So what shall it profit a man if against the whole world loses his own soul? Kahit makamit mong lahat. Pag wala kang Diyos, wala yan. And Christ died for you. God loves you so much, He gave you His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Yan ang unang-unang most important thing na pa. Turo natin sa mga bata. Relationship with God through faith in Christ. So that I'll end this lesson with some reflection questions maybe. Number one, are you ready to give parents? Give your heart and your soul and your efforts in the coming days for the continuing education of your kids. Ready na ba kayo? I hope yung lesson ko today, kahit kakaunti lang nakatulong sa inyo as you uh, think, sa, habang pinag-isipan nyo, ina-anticipate nyo po yung mga responsibilities nyo pag-start ng klase, pag-start ng online learning. I hope na itong mga lesson na ito na tinuro ko sa'yo, makatulong ng kahit kaunti. Okay? Because you have to give all out. You have to sacrifice. A lot of the success of this academic learning of your kids in the coming days will depend on you as their parents. The second question I would like you to ask you, ask you have you taught the five indispensable values to your children? Na ituro mo na ba ito? Ituturo mo. Kung hindi pa. So that they could succeed not just in academics, but in every facet of their life. Lahat na area ng buhay nila. Hindi lang natin goal na maging matalino ang anak natin para makaaral aral sa magandang university. More than that, kailangan natin turuan yung mga anak natin ng values para mayroon silang foundation to become successful in every area of their life. That concludes my lesson for today. I'm like going to go back to Jeff. You have some questions or comments. Uh, Jeff will facilitate. Okay? Thank you so much and good day to you.